Hi, I'm Tom Parker of Winjack Solutions, and in this video, I'll be discussing one of my favorite topics, automating Acrobat with JavaScript. Specifically, this video will cover how changes in the Acrobat 10 user interface affect automation scripting. To begin, there haven't been any significant changes to the JavaScript model. So, the business logic for your current automation scripts should work exactly the same as it did before. And, if you're planning on writing an automation script, then everything in the JavaScript reference for Acrobat 9 is still accurate. For our purposes here, the big changes are in the Acrobat user interface. If you haven't noticed already, this presentation is being displayed in Acrobat 10. You'll note that there are fewer menu items and significantly fewer toolbars. In fact, there is only one toolbar that can be customized. It's called the Quick Bar, and it's in this area right here. All the tools that in previous versions of Acrobat were on the toolbars are now in panels that are displayed on the right side of the window. These panels are displayed and hidden using these buttons, Tools, Comment, and Share. But most of the tools we're concerned about as Acrobat users are in the Tools panel. This panel displays a number of tool categories that are much like the toolbars that were in previous versions of Acrobat. Also in previous versions of Acrobat, when a toolbar button was created through JavaScript, it appeared on the Add-on Tools toolbar as shown here on this slide. I'll zoom in so that we can see it a little bit better. In Acrobat 10, the same buttons that are shown on the old toolbar here now appear in the Tools panel on the Plugin Add-on Tools category. When the mouse hovers over top of one of these buttons, a small gripper bar appears to the left side. Users can move these buttons from here onto the Quick Toolbar by clicking on that gripper bar and then dragging the button into place. This is specifically an activity that the user has to do. There's not yet a way to do this programmatically from Acrobat JavaScript. As you can see, JavaScript toolbar buttons are handled pretty well by Acrobat 10. If your automation scripts use JavaScript toolbar buttons, then you shouldn't need to make any changes to get those automation tools to work in Acrobat 10. The biggest issue with automation scripts in Acrobat 10, the one that might cause a small rewrite to your scripts, are the top-level menus. Previous versions of Acrobat had nine top-level menus, as shown on this slide. Acrobat 10 has only five. As a simple example of an automation script that uses the menus, let's take a look at the Help menu. These items on the bottom are shortcuts to documents that I use frequently. The JavaScript reference, for example, which is this one here. All of these items were added with a simple automation script that I originally wrote for Acrobat 6. That's four versions ago, and I've never had to change it since. Now that Acrobat 10 is out, all I needed to do was copy the script file into the Acrobat 10 JavaScript folder. Since Acrobat 10 has a help menu, my scripts continue to work exactly as they did before, without any changes. One common and seemingly obvious choice in the previous versions for an automation menu item was on the Tools menu. But as you can see, Acrobat 10 does not have a Tools menu. If an automation script was written to place a menu item on this or on any of the other menus that are no longer available in Acrobat, then you're going to get some undesirable behavior. Let's see how this works. I'll use the JavaScript console window to run a few examples. The JavaScript function for adding a menu item is app.addMenuItem. At a minimum, it requires three inputs. the display name of the menu item. Here it's my item 1. The second input is the language independent name of the parent menu. For now, this is set to the tools menu, as someone might have done for a script in the previous versions of Acrobat. And the last input is the JavaScript code that will be run when this menu item is selected. This is just an example, so I've entered the code for a simple pop-up alert box just to let us know that the menu item is working. Now, just for testing purposes, I'm going to change the parent menu item to a fake name, one that I know doesn't exist in Acrobat. When this code is run, it throws an exception that tells us that there is a problem with the parent menu item. If this were a real working script, the execution would stop here. Nothing else in the script would get run. 
Obviously, the script is broken, but at least we've gotten a visible indication that something is wrong and we can fix it. One obvious fix is to change the parent menu item to an item that I know exists. For example, the file menu. Now when I run this code, it returns the text undefined. The app.addMenuItem function doesn't return a value. Undefined just means that nothing was returned. There was no error indication, so it looks like everything worked. If we go to the file menu and take a look, sure enough, that new item is on the very bottom, and if I select it, it displays the alert pop-up with the text that we placed in it. So, there we have two very clear situations. When a menu item doesn't exist, we get an error indication, and if the menu item does exist, our item is placed on that menu. So let's see what happens to an automation script that uses the Tools menu. I'll change both the parent name, the menu item name to make it something unique, and the text in the alert box. I'll clear out the result and run the function. This code also returns undefined. There's no error, which makes it seem as if the code actually worked, even though there isn't an actual tools menu. This is where things get a bit tricky. For operational reasons, Acrobat 10 still contains all the old menus. The new user interface doesn't display the old menus, but they are still there inside Acrobat. That menu item that we just added, it's actually there too, attached to the old tools menu that we can no longer see and that the user can no longer use. I know it's there because if I run the app.executeMenuItem function with the menu item that we just ran, it pops up that alert box just like we'd expect. So the item's there, the user just can't get to it. The lesson here is that Acrobat is not going to complain about your old automation tool if it uses an old menu item. But the fact is, that old tool is no longer going to work because those menus are no longer visible. There are two main solutions for fixing the menu item issue. The easy one, which we just saw in the example, is to simply pick another menu for your tool. However, ideally, you'd probably like to create the top-level menu that's missing since that's what your users expect. Unfortunately, this isn't a good idea. There's no way to create top-level menus with JavaScript. But if you really do need a top-level menu, then it is possible to create one with a plugin. Acrobat plugins are written in C++ and use a special SDK to gain a deep level of access into the internals of Acrobat. Creating a menu item is actually a very simple task for a plugin, but it does require some advanced skills to implement. As an example, the pdfscripting.com menu shown here is generated by a plugin. Rather than trying to recreate the old top-level menus, I've created my own branded menu, which actually has its own advantages. It's not a good idea to try and recreate those old menus. Remember, Acrobat is still using those old menu names internally, so trying to recreate them could cause conflicts. But once you've created a top-level menu, a script can add additional items to it without a problem. This works because on startup, Acrobat loads the plugins first and then runs the folder-level scripts. Here's how I would add an item to the pdfscripting.com menu. This is Acrobat's local JavaScript folder. The system is a Windows Vista operating system, so the local Acrobat JavaScript folder is in the local user's app data folder. You can see the path here that leads down to it. And these are all of my automation scripts. Most of these add toolbar buttons, but this one, the config.js file, is the one that I use to add menu items to the Acrobat top-level menus, mostly to the help menu. Let's open it up, and you can see all the lines of code one for each menu item that's added to Acrobat. This is the line of code that adds an item to the pdfscripting.com menu. Our item is labeled My Test Item, and notice the parent name. It's different from the display name. This is because each menu and menu item in Acrobat has two different names. The display name which is what the user sees, and the language independent name, which is the name that Acrobat uses to identify the menu. For this function, we have to use the language independent name. Notice also 
the message that's going to be displayed when we select the menu item. Remember that for when we test it. Now I'll save this file and in order to run the script Acrobat has to be closed and then restarted. Both plugins and folder level scripts are only run on Acrobat Startup. Let's look on the menu and there's our item. When I select it, the expected text is displayed. Using a plugin to create a new menu item might not be an option, so there is a third solution, which is to use a toolbar button and avoid the menu item issues altogether. To wrap things up, if your automation script uses a toolbar button, then you probably don't need to make any changes to your scripts. If you've used one of the menu items that existed in previous versions of Acrobat but doesn't exist in Acrobat 10, you'll need to implement one of the solutions I've discussed here. You can find a JavaScript tutorial on this site that explains the details of creating menu items, a lot more details than I've shown here. And you'll also find that some of the tutorials that are on automation topics also include information on creating toolbar buttons. Here are the links. Thank you and happy scripting.